Shut your eyes. Stop your ears. The world is full of deception and illusion. All that seems solid is, in truth, mutable, an evanescent sliding of uncertain parallax. Do not believe the lies, but neither seek the truth. The hard pit of irrefutability that will be laid bare when the soft flesh recedes at the unseen hour. Once upon a time, there was a great thane of the land who lived in a mighty castle which would one day form the heart of a sprawling layered city. He ruled over mountains and moors and had won many bloody disputes to secure his position. But he was cruel and avaricious and always wanted more. He saw threats everywhere, even in the likes of a certain tweed-kilted soldier, fourth class. Oh, mighty Greek! Greek, great thane of Grizzleburg, I have returned from the wars to claim back my rightful land, my titles, and the hand of your fair daughter. Which, for the record, I did not agree to. <laughs> yeah, yes, so, uh, yes, about that. Uh, actually, as it happens, I've decided that you, you can't have them. I'm sorry, I, I beg your pardon? Yes, uh, your lands, your titles, your honors, I have decided that those are, are mine now. But... Uh, Primogeniture! You you can't do that! Yeah, I'm afraid I already have. I, I took all your things while you were at the war. Your money and your property, your serfs. Uh, I was rather hoping you wouldn't survive. Well, g give them back. <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, uh, Buffalo Brennan? Yes, boys. Throw him in the dungeon. Wait, no, no, you're making a mistake! Am I? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, silly me. Uh, Buffalo, cut him into five pieces and send them to different fiefdoms. Daddy... Dearest, can I make a suggestion? Well, of course, darling girl, uh, so long as it's something whimsical and in no way empowers you with agency or autom autonomy. <laughs> of course. It's just, you've been looking for a brave hero to go on that perilous quest to retrieve the Autologion. Ah, uh, the Autologion! Shh! Uh, but you're, you're right, stride forth. Uh, you shall have all your wealth returned, uh, everything you desire, once you have delivered to me the mythical treasure of the Autologion. You owe me, Stride Force. Yes, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> but this is a significant improvement on the previous scenario, so I'll take it. Oh, and Stride Force, try not to die. Well, yes, obviously. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> oh, that's better. The open road. <laughs> the rolling, misty moors. A chance to make my fortune against the odds and avoid a horrible, slow and medieval death. <laughs> yup, just me and my destiny. And, and what's that? <laughs> a mischievous looking man in a green coat standing at the crossroads. Yup, lost my yellow! <laughs> totally ordinary human man, just sort of <laughs> hanging out at a rural crossroads. <laughs> Not cutting anyone out of anything. Especially not their souls. <laughs> Especially not heroic passers by. What about me there? Guess you were wondering. Well, that's very reassuring. Thank you. Seeing as you're a trustworthy sort, oh. perhaps you can help me. I seek the treasure of the Ontologian. The Ontologian! Shh. A mighty and mythical treasure, indeed, guarded by vis viscous wild beasts. <laughs> <laughs> All matted hair and salaverin jaws. Oh, they'll immediately disembowel you if you're dressed like that. <laughs> Victim blaming? No, 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 no. I'm just saying that you're sort of asking for it if you're going on a quest in that outfit. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Fortunately, I have here a magical animal belt which will transform you into the likeness of a manacious and ferocious horror. Ah, the things we do to fit into society, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and I ask nothing in return, nothing of any value. Just a boring, dusty little book. No use to anyone. It's in there with all the gold and the jewels of the treasure of the ontologion. Well, that's fine. Who cares about a stupid old book? Ha! Yeah. Doesn't yeah. even have pictures. Oh. Uh, oh, and then there's the guarantee, but that's just a standard soul clause. What's on here? So what? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, just in case you get torn to pieces to death or otherwise fail, and I'll get your soul for eternity. Yada yada yada. Right. Well. 
Um, I, am, I mean, I'm not going to fail, so where do I sign? Gosh. Oh, thank you. Well, off you go, it's that way. All right, I will go. I will go. And as I seek my destiny, I will whistle this cheerful monologue. I've had murder on my mind recently. I don't know why uh, large festivals like this, large gatherings of people start to make me think about how I can eradicate those people from the earth. <laughs> Not all of them, mind you. I mean, there's no need to like take out large swaths of people. That's very, very obvious. No, just like decimate. What's one in 20? Decimate is one in 10. What is just one in 20? One in 50? One in a hundred centimate? <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Just think about it. It would be the most exclusive live performance at the festival. Just right this way. Go into this uh, dusty used clothing store. We'll call it Venue 666. <laughs> Just look in the back near the tweeds, the heavy, heavy, authentic Scootland musky tweeds. Just push them aside. Murder box. <laughs> An immersive experience just for you. <laughs> Unrepeatable. Never the same show twice. It would be so easy. Now, you couldn't do everybody who came to Murder Box. You couldn't actually murder them all. Like I said, too, too obvious. You want to have legs. You want this project to take a life of its own. Take on a life of its own. You can't kill everyone. You got to pick and choose, Sweeney Todd style. You know, of course, then that does beg the point. What do you do with people after they've experienced murder box? I mean, make art of their bones? <laughs> Tan their hides and turn them into cute little boutique furniture that you could sell on the high street? I mean, I'm sure a leather lampshade would look really nice in your house or maybe a, a lamp that's just a light bulb. I'm a sucker for anything that's a bare Edison light bulb, right? So chic. <laughs> Swedish modernism. <laughs> but then put in human fat and then watch that fat melt and ooze around a little bit, lit by the bare light bulb. Oh, gosh, yeah, but that would look really nice in my living room. <laughs> So then you're actually making money. Are you the first endeavor to actually make money at the fringe? <laughs> it's all thanks to Murder Box. <laughs> I think this could be the, the next it happening, completely original idea, complete immersive theater. And if, you know, you get immersed in lie or some other, you know, corrosive material because, well, you know what? The next showing is in 20 minutes, so we've got to clear the theater. <laughs> I think really performance art is the most dangerous game of all. <laughs> ah, yes, this, this, this must be the cave of the vile keepers of the ontologian. Huh. How peculiar. A dingy cave with a sash roof and thatched windows. <laughs> well, <laughs> a little sash window joke for you. <laughs> well, now to transform using this stinky old pelt. On it goes. Uh, ah, 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 now I am some kind of hairy yotun. Right, <laughs> let me in! Who is it? Who's a banging on our door? Ah, a monster! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, n ah, another monster! <laughs> like what eyes? Uh, let, let, let me in, please, fellow 
Monster! Oh, there's a strange bear at the door. Are we expecting anyone, Grandpa Bear? Well, let me take a look, Grandma Bear. Uh, no, uh, Mama Bear? Is this a friend of yours? Let me see him. No, I do not know this bear. <laughs> Although he is a fine slab of meaty specimen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bears, that's what we are. Uh, don't, please, please don't eat me. Baby bear, do you know him or should we tear his face off? Now, just a minute. It is Strive Forth. Strive Forth the hero. Strive Forth the wanderer. Strive Forth the changeling. Brought here in the floor of another comic fable. It's a cosmic fable, probably, you mean. Yeah, I can't read. <laughs> uh, we'll have to get back to your homework in a minute. <laughs> well, so long as it's a bear that we know, he can come in. Uh, thank you. In I come. Here you go. Yep. Yeah. Just close yeah. this door behind me. It's ah. a sticky door. Right. So, uh, here we are. We have um, Grandpa Bear, well, Grandma we... Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. Uh, is, there, is, there a, is there a Papa Bear? Not ah. Bear. Heteronormative much? <laughs> yes, yeah, it happens there was once a Papa Bear, but uh, the galoot kept enforcing his patriarchal authority on the whole family. Overbearing, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, apparently his porridge was too hot, so the whole family had to go for a walk. My porridge was, if anything, a little on the cool side. Oh, deadbeat dad, way to buck stereotypes. <laughs> huh. Oh, nevertheless, that does sound very annoying. Yeah, she bit his throat out. I see. Gosh, yes, do remind me not to do anything to warrant that. There will be no further warnings. Now, Heather, off we go back to homework. <laughs> I've got exams. Jolly, jolly good. Well, the bears have accepted me as one of their own. Now to, to search, to search for that bear treasure, or beige. <laughs> Maybe through here. Maybe through these props. Ah, the, the dining room. And a table piled high with delicious haggis and black pudding. Perhaps I'll just have a, a wee taste. <laughs> oh. oh, it's delicious. It turns out bears are very good at making haggis. <laughs> so good. <laughs> right. Anyway, back to searching for the treasure. Right after I just have a bit of a sit down on one of these here chairs. Uh, just sit down here. Oh no! Oh! That's a shame! <laughs> Apparently they don't make such good chairs. Uh, maybe this one will be more. Oh no! Oh dear. Uh, how, how about. Uh, no! Well, no, that one. Well, that's broken. <laughs> oh, well, all this standing up and sitting down is exhausting. I think I'll just find somewhere to lie down for a moment. Oh, no! What's happened to all our lovely store of offal? All the delicious haggis we were saving up for our winter hibernation! What? What is it? What's happened? Someone's what? eating all the food! Yeah. But we'll starve! How, who could have done this? This is all rather a shock for an old bear like me. I'd better have a sit down and... Oh, no! What is it now? It's the chairs! Someone's broken all the chairs. Oh, beautiful chairs. Now we're all of a flutter. Or perhaps you had better have a lie down, Mother. Yes, you're right. I'll just... Oh, no. What could be next? He's in our bed. Uh, what? Oh, hello, everyone. I was just having a nap. In someone else's bed? Uh, yes, technically, but, but I mean, is that... My really... clean sheets! And he's put his feet on the pillow. Oh, yes, I what? did, but it's fine, surely. It's not your bed! And feet on the pillows, uh, really. I mean, we're, we're monster bears, aren't we? Are we? I'm beginning to wonder. The <laughs> bear who puts his feet on the pillows, who does that? <laughs> it doesn't sound like any bear I know. Well, I mean, I mean but you, you are... Well, wild animals. We are oh. more than savage beasts. We are the order of Orsini entrusted with the enshroudment of the opulence of the ominous ontologion. Oh, you. <laughs> Let's eat him up. Uh, yes, he has probably come to steal the treasure which we, the bears of the order of Orsini entrusted with the enshroudment of the opulence of the ominous ontologion, oh, you, protect. Good thing he doesn't know that we've hidden it all under lyrical angel man, Phil Granger. Ah! It's under Granger! Off to riches and freedom! He's getting away! I'm floored by your power 
feel it running through your veins You should be metered by the hour Here I go, falling in love again Your feet are just like tree roots I see the mountains in your face I'll swap your wellies for rocket boots Meet me out in space Someone take the lid off And we'll go flying Someone pop the cork And I'm yours And we'll just buckle up The roof's just sky thin Run fast enough We're bound to hit a course Cause no one ever told you never Or did you never look that far I've started mapping out forever But I'm gonna need a bigger car And I'll swap your two-stroke for rocket fuel Count me down from ten And we'll crowdsource a space school Here I go falling in love again Someone take the lid off And we'll go flying Someone pop the car And I'm yours And we'll just buckle up Cause the roof's just sky thin Run fast enough We're bound to hit a course Love, you know I'm running Same cast but different kind And Don't you know that I'm collecting All these treasures you leave behind And I know this might be fleeting I know this might not last This tide comes in again and This tide goes out again so fast Someone take the lid off And we'll go flying Someone pop the cork And I'm yours And we'll just buckle up The roof's just sky thin Run fast enough We're bound to hit a course Fast enough, we're bound to hit a course. Run fast enough, we're bound to hit a course. Finally! <laughs> oh! Finally! <laughs> Back in a familiar country. Yes, those, those terrible keepers of the ontologian can't afford me all this way. No, no, I'm sure they won't turn up later. <laughs> oh, look, there's the crossroads, just up ahead. And here's me again. I see you've brought me the completely ordinary and worthless book that you promised. You know what, stranger? I've learned a thing or two from my time amongst the bears. Really? I think you're lying to me, and that this book is, in fact, very powerful and valuable. Yeah, but you promised. Uh, plus, also, how can you hope to compete with my supernatural trickeries and my wizardriness? Ooh. I can, I can just pop this pelt back on. You see? Oh, I oh, see. You're a, you're a bear again. That's right. <laughs> and now I'll murder you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, being consumed. I'm not doing so terribly well in these last couple of episodes. <laughs> Oh, that was nice. Ah, well, there we go. That's the devil beating his own game. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now, on to, to, to reclaim my rightful lands from the Thane of Grisselberg. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you can't chain me out, Chris! <laughs> I've returned! Oh, you, you've got past the chains on the door. <laughs> 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 
Dead was. Knocked you right off the table. <laughs> and not dead, I see. <laughs> not even slightly. And here's your treasure, you bloodthirsty old lunatic! <laughs> uh, where's the book? Uh, there was supposed to be a book. Oh, you're after the book too. Yes, of course. You, you can keep the rest of this trash. Just <laughs> give me the book. I covered only the sacred ontology on itself. Excuse me, both. There's a family of bears at the gate. Uh, uh, pour hot oil on them or something. Make them go away. Oh, no. You're too... Here, take the book. Uh, my fiancé and I will, will simply slip out the back way with a bit of this treasure. And I'd like to make it known that this was my plan all along. <laughs> yes, fine, fine. I, I need only the ontologian. Lungs punctured, dying, ah, dying. Ah, and now you, Stradworth! We've come ah, to eat you up! <laughs> and, uh, I reclaim all treasure! This is where you will meet your ends! Drive forth the giant thing! Nobody leaves! Oh no, even the baby bear! <laughs> There's no escape! No, ah, no, no, ah, no, no, I shall release the force of power of this ancient tomb to crush my enemies. Oh. But what unknowable truth do I see written here? Irresistible, impossible words that reshape worlds to fit them, uh, shifting and contracting the multiplicious universe to conform to their arbitrary whim. I. I. A, a book supposed to glow like that? Father, he's turned to stone. Ah, the heat. Oh, oh God, no, the book. It's, it's emitting a terrible glow. I would run away if they hadn't eaten my legs. <laughs> the light, it's, it's so terrible. It, oh. Ah, oh. And so. The bloodthirsty Thane is ossified by a magic book, and the gruesome massacre of his court by wild animals ends in a burning, melting chaos. And you too, dear readers, should probably try reading a book. <laughs> but we will, of course, welcome you back when that all gets too much, at much as it surely will, at the unseen hour. <laughs> We hope that the Unseen Hour episode 40, The Vile Keepers of the Ontologian, was neither too hot nor too cold. <laughs> the Unseen Hour is always recorded live. For upcoming live dates, see the Unseen Hour... Uh, website. <laughs> see, see the website. Unseenhour.com. This episode was performed just right by Bryce Trafford, Holly Morgan and James Carney at the Banshee Labyrinth as part of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. It features a monologue written and performed by Cecil Baldwin. The musical guest was Phil Granger. Theme music by The Unrecorded. The Unseen Hour is an Unseen Things production created, written, and produced by James Carney, and the podcast is produced wildly by Andy Goddard and L.O. Watts. We look forward to seeing you again at The Unseen Hour. Woo!